Well, um, I have five o'clock, and so uh, I'm going to uh, call this July 19th meeting of the Utility Service Board to order. And I understand from staff that our first item of the business is to amend our agenda to remove items number six and seven from the agenda. Um, and uh, I guess those items are not quite ready to bring to the board. Is that right, Vic? That's right. Okay. So uh, is there a motion to uh, amend our agenda with the removal of items six and seven? So moved. Second. All right, Ann Latrina, can you please call the roll? Sure. Kapler? Yes. Carpenter? Yes. White? Yes. Burnham? Yes. Sherman? Yes. Roberts? Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, so our uh, next item is to approve the minutes from our previous meeting, which was July 6th. Uh, are there any uh, changes or questions about the minutes? All right, seeing none, is there a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Second. All right, and Latrina? Parmenter? Yes. Roberts? Yes. Burnham? Yes. White? Yes. Kapler? Yes. Sherman? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so our July 6th uh, minute, uh, minutes from the meeting are approved. Next, our approval of the claims. We have standard invoices in the amount of $3,650,350.44. Are there any questions on standard invoices? All right, seeing none, uh, is there a motion to approve standard invoices? So moved. Second. And let Latrina please call the roll. Kapler? Yes. Sherman? Yes. Roberts? Yes. Burnham? Yes. White? Yes. Parmenter? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, invoices are approved. Next are utility bills in the amount of $199,326.37. Uh, any questions or comments on utility bills? Seeing none, then is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. And Latrina? White? Yes. Sherman? Yes. Burnham? Yes. Roberts? Yes. Parmenter? Yes. Kapler? Yes. Thank you. All right. Uh, next up are wire transfers in the amount of $549,252.47. Any questions from the board on wire transfers? All right, seeing none, is there a motion to approve wire transfers? So moved. Second. And Latrina? Sherman? Yes. White? Yes. Parmenter? Yes. Kepler? Yes. Roberts? Yes. Burnham? Yes. Thank you. Okay, wire transfers are approved. Uh, next are customer refunds in the amount of $3,439.31. Any questions from the board about customer refunds? All right, seeing none, is there a motion to approve refunds? So moved. Second. And Latrina? Roberts? Yes. Sherman? Yes. Burnham? Yes. Kepler? Yes. Parmenter? Yes. White? Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, refunds are approved. Uh, next is our uh, approval of the consent agenda. And for that, I will turn it over to Vic Kelson. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, Vic Kels, uh, department head. I've got the department, the consent agenda for tonight, which totals four thousand six hundred dollars. Uh, this is all to Electric Plus uh, troubleshooting the relay for the low service pump at Monroe. Uh, is there uh, 
uh, any, uh, if there's no opposition to this item, it will be approved as recommended by staff. Uh, is there any opposition? Hearing none, uh, the consent agenda is approved. Thank you. Thank you, Vic. Uh, next item is a request for approval of an agreement with Reed and Sons Incorporated for the North Lindbergh Drive water main replacement project. And uh, Jane Fleeg will tell us about this. Jane? <laughs> Thank you. Yes, Jane Fleeg for the record, utilities engineer. Um, if you'll recall at your July 6th meeting, you approved resolution 2021-08, which recommended awarding to uh, Reed and Sons Construction Incorporated, the North Lindbergh Drive area water main replacement project in an amount of $1,065,000. This is the agreement that uh, begins the process of getting them uh, started on this project. So I'd be happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions from the board? All right, then seeing none, uh, is there a motion to uh, approve this agreement with Reed and Sons? So moved. Second. And let Trina please call the roll. Roberts? Yes. Preminter? Yes. White? Yes. Kepler? Yes. Burnham? Yes. Sherman? Yes. Thank you. Thank right. you. Thank you. That motion is approved. Um, before we move on to our next item, I just want to let the public know that if you would like to give public comment at the end of our meeting, uh, you can put your uh, uh, comments in the comment section of our Facebook live stream, or if you are on uh, Zoom, you can put it in comments on Zoom, and Holly will read those at the appropriate time. All right, uh, is there any old business from the board? All right, any old business from staff? All right, uh, any new business from the board? Any new business from staff? Actually, and, I have some. Uh, oh, sure. I knew it would catch you off guard. Uh, wow. There's just, there's, yeah, it's never happened before. Uh, there's something that may be coming down the pike. I just want to give everyone a heads up. Uh, we have had the opportunity to apply for a grant from the State Water Infrastructure Fund. This is from the Indiana uh, Finance Authority. I don't know what our chances of getting anything from this are, uh, but we uh, have applied uh, for around two and a half million dollars for a number of different initiatives. Um, we will not know for a while uh, if we if we get it or not, but it could open up some opportunities for um, for projects both on sewer and water. Uh, so I just wanted to let you know, uh, we may be coming to you in the fairly near future looking for uh, appropriations for doing a couple of projects we hadn't anticipated being ready to do. That's the first thing. Then okay. there's yet another thing. Yes. Um, do we have um, dedicated people who help in the grant writing? Or uh, is it no, just we do. seat of the pants? Well, we, we've got experience writing grants. Uh, we have several people with grant writing experience. We don't have anyone dedicated to that task. So uh, we we saw we had this opportunity come along and uh, we just went ahead and we discussed it amongst ourselves and came up with projects that we thought were affordable that would be useful for the utilities department. So um, assuming we get it, then we'll move on from there. Thanks. Um, the second thing is actually another grant. Um, the uh, recent flooding downtown, uh, uh, we are, we're, uh, we are also seeking funding to help do some computational modeling of the basin that led to that flooding. And we're hoping that we'll be able to get, um, we'll be able to get some federal assistance with that. So we've, we've begun the conversation there. Uh, we won't know for a while where that goes either, but uh, we're hoping that we can find some assistance with that. Uh, and Julie? Just that was going to be my next question is like, are we eligible for any kind of uh, flood relief money? So that's great to hear that that might be a possibility. Yeah, this isn't relief money. This would be more of a, a assessment tool for seeing what, um, what our improved infrastructure can handle. 
and then uh, what, if any, uh, improvements might need to be made uh, going forward uh, in the event of another really intense storm like that. But uh, so this isn't not, really relief really money. But if it's not, okay, would you mind explaining to us who, uh, who's giving the money if it's not flood relief? Who, where would that might be coming? We would be working with the Corps of Engineers to do planning assistance. So the Corps of Engineers is giving, is granting money to people. Possibly, yeah. They have a grant. They have a planning assistance program. So this is for planning what we do. It's not for any kind of relief. Oh, and uh, Kirk. Hey, Vic. Thanks for bringing that up. Uh, you know, on Friday at five thirty. Uh, Sixth and Indiana flooded significantly again, and Sixth Street did. We had vehicles with uh, water about a quarter of the way up, and a couple of cars flooded out, and things like that. So, this is an urgent problem. I mean, we here we have uh, really twice in a month uh, significant damage, and whatever is happening there at the inlet to the the aqueduct is just not. Not able to handle all this. It's it's more rain than our system can handle as it's currently configured. Uh, as soon as the current project that we're working on is completed, we're going to redo that inlet. Uh, that would be the next project we take on. That will relieve it some, but the reason for looking at looking into a planning uh, grant opportunity would be to simply look and see what else, if anything, do we need to do. Uh, there's really very, very little detention on the IU campus. And that's part of our problem down there. So um, we're hoping that, uh, we, we, we hope that uh, being able, we can get some sort of planning assistance with some uh, hydraulic modeling to see how that, how that whole system would function. But that's what we're working on. Okay, and Julie, did I see your hand or? Okay, and then Amanda. Thanks, Jean. Vic, there was also flooding. I know they, they were talking about the, the Kirkwood and the 6th Street area, but we have video footage from Dunn Street here as well, where Dunn Street was, was flooding like towards, I, I'm trying to care, it was flooding northbound. Sure, it comes down the hill there next to, right. next to Kilroy's upstairs pub and all that, yeah. Inlet that you're, that you're speaking of. Well, the inlet that I'm speaking of, and Jane, if she's still on, knows more about that than I do, is uh, is located in that vicinity. But uh, what happened when we had the big flood is it all backed up through that whole area there. Jane, can you offer any any insight here? Well, I, I think you explained it, that the uh, section there at 6th Street has not been expanded to meet the current capacity. That's on purpose. We have to complete the downstream uh, infrastructure projects first, and then that will be the next one. So the intention is we, we know that it floods there and we can't do anything about that right now until we get downstream improvements in place. So that's the inlet he's talking about, the opening uh, to Dunn Meadow. Great, thank you. Okay, and Julie. Yeah, I just wanna put in a plug, um, the stormwater committee that is getting together on Wednesday, we're looking at all kinds of ideas and one of the things that we are gonna to need to educate the public on is that more concrete and more capacity is not necessarily what we need because that just speeds the water up and makes it worse. We really need some green solutions. We need a lot more mature trees in this town because trees hold a ton of water. Um, and you know we cut down 2,400 trees in Switchyard Park and then you know water goes rushing down that stream. So you know everything we pave and everything we cover with new buildings, if we don't get more plant matter in the ground to hold the water and slow it down, there's just not enough building we can do. So we need to work both sides of that. And that's that's really exciting. I think that this committee is doing some really cool work. And Jim Sherman. Yeah, um, since we're talking about the corner of Sixth and Indiana, it's really nice to have Kirk on the, um, on the board. Um, I guess we're hoping, Kirk, at least I am, that the relations between CBU and the university is still good and maybe 
you could be helpful in that regard. I know that when we talked about the new rate changes, um, the university was not really happy about the increase in costs that would come to the university. So do you have any insights about improving relationship between CBU and IU? Well, you know, Jim, it's, uh, I think the bottom line really is we're, we just need to uh, work as hard as we can and really the communications and, and prior planning uh, segments of all this. Um, of course, the university has its interests. One of the things I noticed when we put our new master land use plan together was that uh, we started adding uh, uh, detention ponds and uh, uh, those type of facilities for uh, a lot of the new building projects. So the university recognized that it needs to do more of that. We got plenty of green space. Um, and there, there's really some pretty good examples of new buildings that we've built where we've put uh, 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 detention ponds uh, in, in place or facilities around the buildings so that we don't have all the runoff onto asphalt and then into storm drains that quickly. Some of them hold it for a while too. The, the uh, cyber infrastructure building at uh, Tenth and the Bypass is a really good example of that. And as you look around, you'll see other ones. But, uh, you know, um, the university, the, what I've seen is that they, they believe, and rightfully so, they do spend a lot of money on their, on our own infrastructure at the university. So they consider it a partnership. Whether that be in fire protection, you know, we write a pretty big check to the uh, to the city uh, from the university uh, every year for that over a million dollars, and um, those kinds of things that you know, when the when the city needs more money for the fire department, they they work with us ahead of time so we can work that stuff in. I don't have any idea how this last rate rate request uh, how that got worked ahead of time, but uh, um, the other I think innovative ways to look at it is. You know what can the university contribute um, in its normal building processes that might uh, mitigate needing to have as big a rate increase for the university down the road. So the you know, university could build things into projects. You know these are the kind of things we need to look at. And you know I've I've not been uh, diving into the utilities stuff much here until recently. So I really need to talk more to our facilities folks about it. But in general, Jim, you know, it's um, certainly we've learned this during COVID. Uh, during the past year, 18 months, uh, we've been able to do some great things with the city, the county, and a, and a hospital by by meeting regularly. And it's been an emergency, so we've, <laughs> we've kind of been forced to do things. But things I wasn't sure that I'd been able to get through or done uh, two years ago, uh, somehow slid right on through and we were able to, to do some good things this past year and a half to help us with the, the COVID emergency. So I'm hoping that's what we can do here um, as well. And I'm yep. confident that you'll be a good liaison between CBU and IU. So it's good to I'll, have you here. I'll try my best. And, uh, you know, I know the folks at facilities, uh, capital projects pretty well. And, uh, uh, they were okay with me taking this appointment. So um, at least there's no animosity at that point uh, in all this yet. So <laughs> I'll keep uh, doing my best here. So Vic, uh, any last comments on, on the planning or potential for planning uh, through the Corps of Engineers? No. Okay. <laughs> just just okay. one sentence was all I really needed. Yeah. yeah. Well, oh, go ahead, Julie. Do they have a deadline by which they let you know, Vic? No. So let us. Yeah. It. 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 Who knows? Uh, there's. There may or may not be money available. It's a first come, first serve thing. And, um, and I just wanted to let you know that we were looking into this as a possibility. Well, clearly the board is very excited about this possibility. So excellent. All right, well, um, I, I do not believe there were any subcommittee reports for tonight, is that correct? That's right. Okay, um, then Vic, uh, are there any staff reports? 
Uh, just a little. Uh, we continue to work on the rate case. Uh, we've uh, uh, um, our staff continues to work with our uh, attorneys and uh, finance folks to 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 pull that thing together. Uh, and we're hopeful that we're going to be able to move that along soon. Um, we do have some new hires. Austin Stacy is a wastewater plant operator at the Dillon plant. Uh, Donnie George uh, is a laborer at uh, Blue Pool. He's moved from trans uh, from TND over to Blue Pool. And Adam Throop is a line person who is uh, who is uh, promoted from a TND laborer. So, uh, uh, congratulations for the promotions and welcome aboard. Uh, to our new operator. That's all I have. Excellent. Well, congratulations to, to all of those folks. Um, all right. Uh, well, then, uh, Holly, are there any comments in either fa Facebook or Zoom? No comments or questions today. Okay. Well, then, uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn our meeting tonight. So moved. All right, we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.